Okay, this is John from Flint Talk Radio, and um, in case you people are going to regular viewers, you can see from where we're at, we're still back at Flintopia on the corner of Lewis and Broadway, right? Yeah, yep. And we're talking to Eric Spielmeier, right? Spielmaker. Spiel, Spielmaker. 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 Yep. Good German name. It's a tongue twister. Yeah, it's a good German name. But, like, of course, the first time we were on your show, we were in the midst of remodeling. We were in, if you remember, we were had it plastic off and... When was that? that was uh, December, wasn't it? It was December, very cold, okay. very cold. Yeah, it was very cold. <laughs> we all know what kind of winter we had. But but since then, we've basically remodeled this main room, painted it, painted the floor, painted the ceiling, painted everything. And as you can see here, we've opened this up. Right now, we had to... Uh, we brought the tables together because uh, we're, we're you know growing our small plants that we're going to be planting here towards the end of May. But this round circle of tables is now used, uh, what we're doing is bringing the, the AA, AA program and the NA program has meetings here now. Um, and they're going to they're gonna be more on a regular basis as things get going. But, you know, it's another thing that Flintopia can do for the community is, is offer this uh, community room to have meetings to heal people, you know, through the 12-step program. And, and we're proud of that and uh, we love having them here. And if anyone needs a meeting place, we're open seven days a week and we'd love to uh, share our place with you. Doesn't matter what kind of meeting that you might have in mind. In fact, starting in May, we're going to have a young men's meeting here for all the young guys in the neighborhood, like between 12 and 18. And then also we'll be adding a men's, a men's group, men 18 and older, to talk about everyday you know, issues that men have. And you'll hear more about that uh, in, in the upcoming weeks. Um, we are also starting a newsletter for the neighborhood, and uh, we'll be passing that out in the neighborhood uh, when we get to it. <laughs> Won't be too long, but these are, you know, things that we want to do. Uh, we've been in, win in winter, we were here all winter long, stuck inside, because you know what kind of winter we had. It was really good timing, because we bought the building in September, and we spent all winter, uh, Dale and I, uh, remodeling the inside. Started in the basement and, and then worked our way to the main floor. We got the basement done. In fact, we have opened our store, our uh, thrift store in the basement. And uh, you can come by, take a look at what we have. If there's anything you need, uh, what we do with that money, of course, is fund ourselves. So, also, uh, donations, okay, yes. I want to talk about donations. Um, most people donate to Goodwill and Salvation Army, which is two great, two great uh, organizations and a great cause, but uh, if you know us and like what we're doing, we could use the donations. We have a van so we can pick up bigger pieces or you can drop stuff off at any time. Anything from clothes, kitchen items, furniture, basically anything that you would normally donate to uh, any other organization, we, we would like to uh, have you start donating to us to fund our cause. So and pretty much anything would be um, acceptable. Like, how about um, uh, books? Um, you know, people, you know, if family members pass away, definitely you probably can get rid of their clothing, like you already alluded to, you know, get rid of their clothing to this place. And also, what's the number they can reach you at? Okay, well, number one, uh, a good friend of mine when I, I went to St. Francis grade school, Penny Ingram was her name, and uh, her, her, her father, her mother and father passed away and she donated, she took what she wanted in a house and donated the, the whole contents of the house to us and that was, that was huge. Thank you, Penny. But yeah, I mean, you can do that if, if, if someone's passed away and, and, you know, take your pick of what you want, we'll, we'll clean out the house for you. But yeah, anything that you would donate uh, on a regular basis, we, you know, we take here. And the way you can, like I said, you can stop by. I live here and work here, so I'm normally always here. Or you can call me first, or you can also call me and we'll send a truck over to pick up the donations. The number here, well, my number is 810-513-4626. Okay. So uh, anybody has donations or uh, want, also, this time of year, we are looking for people to help us out here. We have open Flintopia Farms. We're starting to plant that. I guess we're going to go outside here in a minute, and we'll show you that area that has become ours, and we're turning into uh, an urban farm. It's wonderful. 
No, you also had some seed you were talking about just a minute ago before we started the camera rolling here. Yeah, we have, uh, my son has found this uh, great company called Johnny's, uh, I believe it's in what, ME, is that Maine? Or Maine? I think. Um, that's ME, I think it is Maine. ME, yeah. yeah, I think it's Maine. But th this is, you know, what I love about this is an employee-owned company, okay? And we, we like that. We like dealing with mom and pop's employee-owned company. And these, of course, are all organic seeds. Um, they come packaged. We've got quite a few packages here. Every, everything you can think of uh, for your garden is, is in here. So, uh, you know, we want to plant organic and we want to sell our organic uh, produce also. So these are like heirloom seeds too. They're like the original stock stuff. It's not the overly hybrid version that exactly. Monsanto puts out. You're right. right. It's right. heirloom seeds, and it gives the dates on here and uh, the date that they were germinated. Everything. It's really cool. Great company. Yeah, Look so them up on the internet. What kind of seeds are they? What kind of a, a very what kind of variation do you have there? Like uh, vegetables or is it uh, flowers? What is it? No, it's it's all vegetables, onions, kale, uh, chard, cucumbers, uh, carrots, uh, squash. You know, basically all the stuff that you would put in in a regular garden. But you know, we we recommend organic, and that's what we grow. We want to start eating, you know, good clean food. Because our food right now is the worst it's ever been. I think most of you know that. But, well, look, there's incident of cancer, um, intestinal problems, uh, you know, hyperactivity, uh, food allergies. All this arises from something, and I think a lot of it is because we're depending on uh, sources of food far away from our normal, you know, haunts. And I think that has, I think your body doesn't adapt to it and reacts negatively to it. Well, yeah, what we're buying in the store today are food-like products, okay? They're not food. Right. Everyone knows, you know, Monsanto with, you know, what, what they're doing to the crops and, and, I mean, it's horrible. It's all over the internet, Facebook, you know, if you don't know by now, you must be living under a rock, but you take a look at, you know, the obesity rate in the United States, even with children, um, yeah, it's, it's a real mess, but we need to get back to... I always think of Little House on the Prairie, you know. Everyone knows that show where the neighbors, they helped each other garden, okay. They didn't have pesticides, herbicides, any of that back then. Everything was natural. You know, neighbors helped each other. It was, you know, that was also a way of having a good community. You know, to help each other, you shared the food. They had livestock and, you know, they shared the meat and they grew their own vegetables. And basically, we need, we need to get back there. And we really do. So, yeah, it's a, and I'm really surprised on what you've done around here. I mean, a lot of organizations started Flint, and I'm not trying to trash anybody, but you guys have done a major amount of work on this place from what we've seen back in December. And um, you also acquired a lot of property, which we'll be seeing later on another you know, segment. We'll start, put this down and walk out there soon and show you got a quite a big area. How many acres would you say is all together? Oh, geez, I don't know. We got. Huh. The land bank, the land bank's been really good to us. Uh, you know, we're we're part of the master plan, and we would like to and hope to think that, you know, the land bank and, and some of the city, you know, parts of the city will help us a little extra be, for, because of what we're doing. You know, this is a 20-year project on the east side of Flint. It's all been rezoned for urban farming now. There's so much open land here. They've been tearing houses out of here for about five years. And, <clears throat> excuse me, so that's what they've done. They rezone this area and, you know, instead of thinking outside the box, they throw the box away and, you know, let's get growing, as I say. Let's now, get going, let's get growing. Now, now are you going to have any kind of uh, bees for, um, you know, for uh, pollination? Or are you going to, like, a heart, you know, the uh, type of a hive, they'll probably have a neck, more of a kind of a fear there because, you know, their chance for swarming. Now, they have the mason bees which I actually have in my yard. Mm -hmm. Of course, it's very hard to get, for me, it's very hard to get them going. But they're like a solitary bee, and they also do a very good job of pollinating. And there's such a big, you know, it's in papers, it's been in the news, the decrease in honeybee, you know, in the United oh, yeah. States. So we, is, there a, is there a plan to have a honeybees on site? or? Definitely, yeah, that's something we're gonna get to. We got a long list of things. This is a 20 year project. And yeah, de we, we definitely wanna, you know, have a nice hive here in the neighborhood. and. Uh, I've been looking on the internet and there's a lot of people that, you know, will help us to get going and um, I think it'd just be cool to learn that, you know, That's, it's to a, be a beekeeper. 
it's quite a bit of work. I had a, my own my own grandfather had seven beehive, you know, hives. Oh, but, really? Yeah. Then he right here on the east side back in the 1940s, but oh. he developed an allergy because of being stung so many times. So he would almost get close to death if he was stung. So he had to cease that activity. But he loved it, and both him and my uh, great grandfather, they're you know his uh, father-in-law, both you know participated in that, and they had. They put out a lot of honey each year, so. Wow, that's nice. Yeah, that's definitely uh, one of the things we are going to do. We we will get that done, and uh, so yeah, we're looking forward to that. And this is our first year. You know, uh, you know, we have our place established here. We've spent going on fifty thousand dollars now of our own money, and. Uh, I think I like the way we're doing it. We're, you know, we're not asking, we're not getting in line down at Mont Foundation and these other organizations with our hands out asking for money. Uh, I don't think uh, Mont is, is giving out as much as they used to. A lot of these projects they gave money to don't last. And we're not going away. We're going to be here 20 years. We're established, you know, and, and like I said, we spent 50 grand of our own money. And, uh, I think that's that's the best way to go about it. Establish yourself, get going, let people know that you're serious, you're not going away, and then maybe next year we might knock on Mott's door or some of these other organizations. But my son's, you know, he's away at uh, the Maharishi University of Management in Iowa uh, getting his degree in sustainable living. This is how this whole pro program got going, but the college is very excited and. And, and he's making a lot of contacts there, and people who want to help us. And it's just a matter of time until we will be funded. See, we know that. Well, the proximity of the, this place to the uh, Flint River, the uh, increased uh, interest because now they just want using the Flint River as a water source for the people of the city of Flint. Uh, you know, the, all this can work together to make it very easily done to irrigate the thing, uh, the irrigate any kind of fields. To any you know a number of things because it's the proximity to the river simply I mean you're about two blocks away from the river at this right. spot so I mean this is a that's a remarkable asset in its own also I mean the development of that for like uh, canoeing and you know and uh, other just basically preserving it sure and and the water is a quality is you know gained considerably for the better uh, since you know a lot of the operations around here the factories have ceased so I mean I, I see a lot of this actually. If one thing that Flint could actually do right now, especially the east side, is actually make a very good go out of urban farming and uh, urban gardening and uh, local food production, and we could probably excel in that because you got you know the roads here. I mean, you got everything easily divided up to uh, different lots. So I can see this would actually be a very good thing to go to. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, the Flint, like you said, the Flint River is nearby, and we hope that you know. Um, you know, this whole program is just getting off the ground and, and Flint's still trying to figure out everything too. We're all new at this. So we'll see what happens. But last week I, I drove up to Claire, Michigan and I bought this 1100 uh, gallon plastic tank and we're going to set that up on an elevated area on the farm across the street. And, and you know, what we'd like to do is go down to the river and transport the water, you know, fill it, fill mm -hmm. it up. And, and set it up there, but you know when you got 1,100 gallon tank, it, it's it's very heavy filled up. So I don't know exactly what, how we're going to do this yet, but you know we're, we're gathering we're gathering rainwater now um, off the off the roofs of the farm and, and houses, and we hope to have uh, gathering the water from the building too. That's something we'll be working on our water system here uh, all summer to get that up because I mean that's that's vital to what we're doing here it's you know on the top of the list to make sure that we have enough water but uh yeah we're doing what we can so i mean you, def you definitely made some serious uh, ground covered some serious ground since i initially talked to you and your son and i'm definitely looking forward to seeing him here because i know we're going to do another segment when he's back and you'll be just watch that more further advanced at that stage, with like he'll be here back here at the end of this month, coming month, right? Yeah, he's he was back at. I mean, he's been gone back to college for five months. He was going to come back for spring break, but it didn't work out. So this is the longest time he's been away since this project is started. And I miss him because he's my son, of course. But I miss him here too because the responsibility, all the responsibility, falls on me, which is fine. But when he's here, you know what I mean. We can we can split it up and. Uh, I don't have to, you know, I just don't have as much responsibility because, you know, we're trying to get to meetings, we're trying to get to, 
everything we can to you know to let people know what we're doing and what our plans are but uh, sometimes um, I spread myself a little thin because of everything that's going on between the remodeling and, and the, you know getting the farm together and I mean a million other things but yeah he'll be back at the end of May I'm excited to have him back and this is going to be a, a, a big summer for us our biggest summer I mean, we, we're coming up on our uh, one year anniversary at the end of May. Last year when he came back at the end of May, we started out in Lapeer, if you remember, on a, a small plot of land out there, just to you know, get our feet wet and get going while we looked for a home that we could call Flintopia, which is here, a perfect building right on the corner of the Green Innovation Zone. So, I mean, I have to say since this, this program has started, I mean, everyone's got, has been open arms, open doors. No one said said no to us, and things are happening just in the you know at the right time in the right order. They're supposed to happen. Happen, and I guess you know that's proof to me that when you're when you're doing you know what I call God's work, you know helping the community, help people less fortunate than ourselves, you are blessed. And I feel that this program's been blessed since day one, and I see it every day. You know, I see it every day. And it's wonderful. I'm definitely impressed by what you know. I've seen so many organizations have good intentions and just fizzles, and they cease after the initial conversation, they're gone. And you've continued quite a bit. And as what people see when we get outside, you'll see the lots and the buildings you acquired, and we'll go into that in a little bit, okay? Very good. Thank you. Okay. Yeah.